Hello, thanks for joining. I'm going to give people a few minutes to join before we get started. Hello everyone, thanks for joining in. We're going to be coming to you live from the Petty Lab in Minnetonka, Minnesota with Nellie Neal. Give everyone a few minutes to join and then we will have a quick tour of the salon and get started on Petty. Hello, thanks for joining. While we're waiting to get started, check out this little bobblehead. Doesn't that totally look like Nelly? It just cracks me up. Let's go ahead and get started since we'll be posting this on YouTube for anyone that missed it. This is a quick visual tour of the salon. We've got the clean lab over here to get things clean after the services. The petty chair where the magic happens. The stuff. And the man. Hi Facebook. And the other thing. <laughs> Art. And when you walk into the Petty Lab, you can actually go the other direction and walk right into Nell's living quarters. All right. Are you ready for a pedicure? I'm ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Let me flip around and say hi if I can figure out how to do it. I'm so challenged at this. There we go. Hello, it's the Fingernail Fixer coming to you from Minnetonka, Minnesota with Nellie Neal where we are going to talk all things pedicures. So feel free to post any questions or comments that you have and I will share with Nellie while he works. Getting over to the chair. And look, I just happen to have Starbucks with me. <laughs> right? So, using liners for a clean experience. Yeah, so I was just going to tell you a little bit about this. So this is the Contigo pedicure chair. And it has these disposable liners in it with a built-in tube. And those tubes actually hook up to an air compressor right under here. So when I press this button, the tube actually circulates air through there, creating the bubbles. And at the end of the service, all of that is disposed of. The tube and the liner. Wow. This is so the then first you get that whirlpool experience. Chair. Nice. And you've got that whole whirlpool experience without the concern Absolutely. of taking the jets out and cleaning the jets. We don't have time for that. <laughs> it's way easier just to roll it up and toss it. Nice. And the changing lights. Right, you can try that out slowly. Let me know how that temperature feels. I can warm it up or cool it down. Yeah, it's perfect. That feels good. Yay. Show some hearts if you like getting pedicures. So we're going to start off with a little foot soak. And with the 15% urea in there, it's actually going to soften up the skin quite a bit before we start the callus reduction. Awesome. We did go ahead and get the cuticle work out of the way ahead of time in the yeah. shaping. <laughs> so. Do you guys want to hear a little bit about the, the setting of this salon? We know how big it's going to talk about that while Holly soaks. Absolutely. So I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to come onto this property. And this is not somewhere that was ever really set up to have a salon. But with the help of the city and the owner of the property, we made this happen. It is a 17-acre nature preserve. So we have our own private half-mile walking trails. And before and after the service, the guests are always welcome to come and just experience the grounds and relax. Come walk their dogs here on the weekends, which I love. Um, so 
it was it was really a unique opportunity to be able to have a living space and a salon together. And I feel really fortunate to have had that that opportunity. I mean, my commute is amazing. So in the province, I only get Starbucks when someone like Holly brings me some. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Starbucks! <laughs> yeah, right, Starbucks. <laughs> Shameless plugs. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> if only they paid me for it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, essentially this space was created as a private pedicure space for my guests. And the whole point of that was so they could come in and feel completely relaxed without anyone seeing kind of what their feet look like and kind of intruding on the conversations that happen here. I think this, the pedicuring can be a, a really personal thing and to be able to create a completely personal, unique space for them, I think was really important to me and my guests. Awesome. Yeah. All right, let's start out with this one. For those of you that are watching, have, has anyone posted a comment? I'm not able to see the comments. And I've done the swipe left and it's showing me who's watching, but it's not showing me comments. Can you do the thumbs up to let me know that there aren't any comments? Everybody's got questions? <laughs> well, my fear is that there are questions and I can't and see them. Should I pull it up on my phone? Yes. yes. Can you do that? And then I can double watch. Can you just go to the Nails Magazine Facebook page? Yeah. And then that way we can answer questions live. Apparently I need Facebook Live lessons from someone. I've just finally figured out holding the camera sideways after people have told me enough times. So I remember. Like there's any comments. Okay, brilliant. There's or lots of good questions. mornings. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so yay, now I can see comments. Woohoo! It is always a good morning at the Petty Lab, especially when you're the one getting the pedicure. <laughs> right? I'm all about pedicure. So essentially what I'm doing here, I had sprayed on the um, soak spray on the feet from LCN and what that's doing is it's really nicely softening up that skin and I'm just starting out by getting rid of getting rid of some of that on the tips of the toes gently with my nail file and we'll switch to a foot file for the rest of the foot. And Nelly, as a diabetic, I always have to be really careful about where I get my pedicures done. Absolutely. What are some things that if there are people watching who are also diabetic, they should be concerned about, or nail professionals should watch for on their diabetic clients? Well, I think the most important thing is to be extremely careful with a diabetic client. You know, especially when you're doing, when you're doing the cleanup on the nail and also working on the calluses. The calluses are there for a reason, so you don't want to reduce them and get rid of them completely. You generally want to just reduce them by about half. So, I mean, more, more often than not, it's just about being extremely cautious and very gentle with what it is that you're doing. Really quick, Evie says, no gloves, what state are you in? Could you hold your hands up oh, so I she can see on. your gloves? They're just gorgeous and yeah. pink. His gloves just blend in with the skin a little bit while he's working, so they're <laughs> difficult to see. It I is Minnesota, right. and he is wearing gloves. Hmm. And CJ says, is that an angel feet file she spies? <laughs> yes, it is. This is an angel feet file. What brand is that? So it is actually angel feet. So awesome. that is the brand. Um, the great thing with this file with diabetic foot care is it's 100% symmetrical. So you can use it in any, di any direction and it won't actually cut or shred the skin. But it is very effective. I don't know if you guys can see that just kind of rolling off there with the silk spray in the file. It's amazing. Even just with a glove, it will start to kind of roll off there. And there's definitely callus because they're diabetic feet. <laughs> we'll get it smooth for you. And what's nice with the angel feet file is it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. A lot of times for me, foot files hurt even on the callus because I'm so sensitive as a diabetic. And that one I don't feel at all. Yeah, that is my favorite part about this file. And that's one of the, the biggest comments I get when I'm doing pedicures on anyone sitting in my chair is they generally say this feels more like a massage than it feels like I'm working on their calluses. 
What was the name of the spray? That was the LCM Soak Spray. So that is a mixture of 17% urea and lactic acid, which is a fruit acid. What can you share about waterless manicures and pedicures? Well, I think, you know, I think uh, waterless manicure is always the way to go when you're working with fingers. Um, for feet, I think that as long as you have the right equipment and the right tools, it's absolutely something that you can do. It's just, for me, it's a preference to use a tub with water. Um, I think that that really adds to the relaxation of the service. Mm -hmm. And I think the warm water feels really good on a lot of people's feet, especially if they took advantage of the walk around the preserve. <laughs> <laughs> For a gal from Maine, one of the industry leaders on waterless pedicures is Jamie Schrebeck. Mm -hmm. If you want to look her up on Facebook, she has some amazing information on waterless pedicures. If you would like to get some education on that. Yeah. Hello from Ireland. Oh, wow. Hello from Maine. Hello from Texas. Hmm. Hello from Los Angeles. Oh, people from all over tuning in. Yes. Well, I'm happy to have you guys here. I'm sure all of you kind of wish you were getting your feet done right now, which is exactly what I wish for. <laughs> Holly's the Especially one. after teaching all day yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I'm like stoked to get my feet done <laughs> today. pretty soft so like I said you don't want to reduce them completely you just really want to smooth them out for the guest and do you have to change anything about the usual rules on shaping the toes straight across for diabetics or does that also apply so I actually when I'm doing a pedicure I hear the intent no matter who's sitting in the chair I use diabetic safety procedures and Generally, as long as the guest is okay with it, I do trim the toenail straight across and just slightly round the edge a little bit to take away any sharp points. Awesome. All right, we've got some more hellos. Hello from Toronto. Hello from CJ in Florida. Hey, CJ, we love you. We do love you, CJ. Hello from Maryland. Hi from California. And I don't know my flags very well. Is that Spain? Hello from Alaska. Hey from Nebraska. We've got all kinds of fun places going on here. And for those of you that haven't met CJ commenting, CJ Murray is actually a distributor out of Florida that has amazing customer service. And even if you don't use the products that the distributor sells, I strongly encourage you to sign up for her newsletter emails because they're so educational and informative. CJ has been a go-to reference for me for the last three years now. I met her in Florida at a training that I attended and huge resource. She's helped me through just about everything. In the water. Yeah, I love asking her questions because she's so well informed and it's not, it's never an opinion question. And anytime I'm like, okay, I don't understand. She's like, here, let me help you. And she breaks it down because I'm a little slow some days on grasping things, and so I just love that she's patient. <laughs> she will explain it to you as many times as you need. <laughs> How's everything feeling so far, Holly? Amazing. Yeah? Okay, yeah, I can't believe the callus work was like so pain-free. It was fabulous. And it was quick. It was quick. It makes quick. You got, if you have the right products and the right tools, it makes the process really, really easy. Sometimes I feel like I should tip extra because it looks like they're putting their whole body into the callus work. <laughs> I think that, that you should still probably do that. Probably oh yeah, I extra. usually tip yeah. extra no matter what, but it makes you feel really guilty <laughs> when it looks like they're straining. <laughs> so should I be working up a little bit more of a sweat? Yes, yeah. yes, there you go. <laughs> Hi from California. Hi from Ohio. Hello from New Orleans, from Michigan, from California. Hi again from Texas. Welcome everyone. Kentucky. Um, what's the best method for ingrown toenails? Well, unfortunately as nail techs, we are not allowed to work on ingrown toenails. So, I shouldn't say unfortunately. Probably fortunately, that's not something I really want to be working on. Um, the best method for that would probably be to consult, have them consult with their doctor. 
if it's just an extreme curvature you're dealing with, there is an amazing process called the BS brace that I really, really, am, I really enjoy, and it works very well. It's usually pretty immediate relief for anyone dealing with with some extreme curvature on their nail. But as far as an ingrown go, that would be a, a situation we would avoid. And I actually just have been looking into and educating myself on the BS brace system with CJ. Uh, there is a request for info, CJ, could you please post your website? And then I also, how do you spell Jamie's last name? It's Jamie Schraebeck, and I'm not sure that I can spell it from memory, so when we're finished with the live broadcast, I'll come back on and tag Jamie in the post so that you can go to her page. I just want them to see this quick. I mean, just lightly working on the on the foot you're already seeing all of that coming off so easily and i wish i could show you guys the pressure it's like no pressure yeah. at all i hold it with two fingers so if you can kind of see that i have my middle finger and my thumb kind of holding it there so you're really not using much pressure it's not as if i'm really gripping this with all my force just lightly dropping the surface And CJ, there's a question if you are on Instagram, so if you could post your social media links as well, that would be great. This is actually my favorite part about the pedicure. I feel like it's the transformative part. Totally. You, you get the biggest change just by doing a little work. And this is the part that they will thank you for days later. <laughs> We have a question, do you use disposable pads on your foot file? So I do not. Um, we spoke about this a little earlier, but this is the Angel file. And with this file, it's 100% symmetrical. It is actually chemically etched. There's nowhere for anything to hide. So when I'm using an ultrasonic cleaner, it is able to get everything out of that file. Leave nothing behind. Um, the one problem with, that I find with when using disposable grits, especially with a diabetic guest, is there is always potential that you're going to leave some of that grit behind and potentially embed it into the foot. So when you're using when you're using foot file with the grit, that grit is sprayed onto that file. So when you're using it with water, a lot of times that dissolves some of those the adhesion that held all that grit onto there. So a little bit safer when you're working with diabetic foot care to use something along these lines that can't cut or shred the skin, which a lot of files have very irregularly shaped grit, so you really can't control little micro lesions and all that happening on the skin. And this file is also safe to put in your autoclave for those states that require autoclave. Absolutely. And the benefit to it professionally, it's it's, it's got a pretty good price point for how long it lasts. Professionally, you'll be able to get about 1,000 to 1,500 pedicures with this file. So I've invested in 10 of them. So I have about 10 years worth of foot files in my drawer. Nice. <laughs> I like to have enough tools to go all day and clean my tools at the end of the day as well. Absolutely. So I don't have to panic about running out during the day. And when you're autoclaving, it takes some time. So. You know, obviously an hour and a half cycle in an autoclave is more time than we have in between guests. Exactly. <laughs> and you could even do it over your lunch break the last half of the day before in the morning and then you have enough tools to do the next half of that day and the next morning. What can you tell us about making it an experience versus a service? Well, I am all about the experience versus the service. I think that when somebody's coming in for a service, every part about it should be exceptional. They should be able to relax completely, enjoy every aspect of it. Typically, I would have some really nice spa music going to kind of calm people, but since this is a live beat, I didn't want the background noise but just dimming the lights down during the massage, putting on the right music, really making them feel comfortable and relaxed. 
and that's, I mean, that really goes into making it more of an experience than sit down, hurry through it, and get them out the door quick. That's a service, you know. And do you select different products for different people, or do you use the same things every pedicure? So, I offer two separate pedicures. I, I only offer two services on my entire menu. And the one that I'm doing right now, this is the urea pedicure. I'm going to add some little special touches just because it's holly, but... I offer also a anti-aging pedicure, which is great for stimulating circulation. It's great for helping with any spots on the skin, um, boosting elastin and collagen production. So those are my two services. I keep it very simple. I don't like to confuse people by having seven pedicures on my menu. I pick <laughs> the two best ones and that's what I go with. Awesome. <laughs> What is the advantage of having urea in any product for feet? So, urea, the urea used in these products is actually a synthetic urea. And urea is a driver, so what it's able to do is kind of help the products penetrate into the, into the layers of the skin. So the active ingredients are going to be able to go a little bit deeper. Um, the body actually naturally accepts urea because it is something that it produces on its own. And there are actually several product lines that use urea in some of their foot products. So you guys could definitely do a little bit of research and see what suits you. And this scrub was a nice light scrub. Mm -hmm. It's a similar texture to the one that I'm familiar with from C&D. What other brands would you, have you experienced any others that have a really soft scrub to them? Yeah, you know, I have used a few. Um, I actually have a couple guests that will bring in a facial scrub for me to use on their legs, which is even more gentle. But the wonderful thing with this scrub is it's, the granules in it are actually, um, you know, man-made. So they're in a, another symmetrical product. So you don't have the irregular shape that you might with a salt or sugar which is also pretty important with diabetic foot care because you don't want anything that could that could abrade the skin too much but I you know I love a good scrub <laughs> I love them all really yes. I mean, we can't go wrong anytime you're exfoliating the skin as long as it's not too aggressive I'd say it usually feels pretty good and is beneficial and I love to use a scrub in the shower before I shave. Because then you can maybe go two days instead of just one. <laughs> so retailing scrubs is a great idea as well. I clearly don't shave. <laughs> <laughs> and nail professionals, for any clients that are watching the broadcast, what do we always want to advise when it comes to shaving before a pedicure? Me to answer that or they answer? I'm gonna let them answer because I'm sure they all know. Yeah, I'm sure. I have every confidence in the nail professionals watching. Probably no matter what you tell those guests, they still try it. Right? Like they're so embarrassed. Oh my gosh, I have stubble. I'm so sorry. It's like you're supposed to have yeah. stubble. I would say Minnesota is probably one of the hairiest states. They get to cover their legs for a good portion of the year, and fortunately. <laughs> Well, like in Just winter, it it's so hard to talk yourself into shaving because you don't have to wear shorts. Really no one's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> Except your pedicurist. <laughs> Yay, we're getting excellent answers. So you want to make sure that you do not shave within at least 24 hours before a pedicure. And if you are maybe have really thin or sensitive skin, 48 hours is even a better idea. Mm -hmm. You can shave after a pedicure, preferably not before. Good job, guys. I knew you would answer it correctly. <laughs> I think you should all tap the little heart and give yourself hearts. Jeez, I'm so proud of you for knowing that. I totally knew you would. <laughs> I had faith in them. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's another nail professional from Minnesota and says, yep, you're right about the hairy people in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like imagine it. states like North Dakota and Montana <laughs> are also guilty. <laughs> yeah, I would say. I mean, I, I think it's safe to say that anyone living in Florida or California in the summer, if they're wearing pants, they probably got lazy for a couple days or a couple weeks. 
We're all entitled. <laughs> Men can't possibly understand how, what the, how much hassle it is to shave I every day. I wouldn't even bother. <laughs> Do any of you have questions about pedicures? to the salon. Yes. <laughs> Margaret, he is actually wearing gloves. They're just pink. Ta-da! Let me come right in on it. <laughs> Those must really blend into your hands. I'm getting several comments on that. Yeah, no, I am I'm wearing gloves. You know, the wonderful thing with, with, these, with these pink pearl gloves is I think that clients don't really notice them as much. You know, generally I they don't. can't feel when you're wearing gloves no matter what. But when they blend in a little bit more, I think that it just, it's, it's less obtrusive. I used to wear black gloves. Mm -hmm. And every time someone sat down, they're like, oh, you're wearing gloves. But nobody comments about it now that I wear these pink ones, probably because they can't tell. But it saves a lot of time from having to give myself a manicure. Right. And the trick with gloves is to make sure that you wear them very fitted. Mm -hmm. And those fitted gloves are going to make a difference for the client. It's going to feel more like it's actually your hand. Yeah, the fit of a glove is very important. I would actually recommend buying a couple boxes and really try and get the size perfect. Yes. What advice would you give new nail technicians entering the industry? Well, I would advise you to take as much education as you can. Education is the most important part when you're starting out. Find yourself an amazing local nail tech that maybe you can apprentice under and learn from them as well. And focus on building an amazing clientele. Don't just work on getting anybody in your chair. Work on getting the right people in your chair. So pick the, cat, the group of people that you really want to specialize in. If you want to work on, you know, 20 somethings, decide that and kind of gear your services towards that. Or if you want to work on the businesswoman, gear your services and your hours towards that. Absolutely. I think education is the biggest key when you're starting out. Finding what you love and becoming a specialist in it so that you have a niche in the industry. Yeah, that is, that is a good point. So I specifically only do pedicures. So I've been very cautious throughout my, key, my career to kind of gear everything over that way. I don't kind of stray from that very often. It's, pedicures are my brand and I'm not really well known in this area for that. So I kind of just keep the menu simple, keep to one service, discovered what I was good at. <laughs> nice. Sylvia is a diabetic and has been told not to get pedicures. Is this true? Sylvia, I am actually a diabetic and I'm clearly getting a pedicure. A lot of times the reason doctors will caution against pedicures is because not all salons do them properly and not all salons use the disinfection that they should use. The Some of the biggest keys for me as a diabetic are to watch what tools they're using, pay attention to how they're using the tools, ask them about the level of education that they have. What are some things you would suggest, Nellie, for a diabetic to pay attention to? You know, there there are some websites that you can go to to find people that have been trained in that specific type of footwork. Um, there are, you know, advanced nail technicians from Medi Nails, and I'm a certified pedologist and certified master pedicures from NAS. And they do have something called the CMP Finder. So if you're looking for somebody to work on your feet, I would suggest heading over to that website, finding someone nearby, and then making sure with them that they are following proper protocol for diabetic foot care. But more or less, I would look, I would look for I mean, just obviously somebody really well educated, somebody very gentle, and maybe for the first time trying them out, you can suggest that they don't do certain things on you. If you don't want them to use a cuticle nipper, they don't have to. You know, you can you can kind of help decide what your comfort level is with having your feet done. Absolutely, and you also can ask the professional to show you what their disinfection practices are. Mm -hmm. Anyone that is going to balk at that or be offended by that 
is perhaps someone that you should go ahead and pass up for another no professional. Mm -hmm. And you could absolutely call the salon too and ask them what their procedures for diabetic foot care are. You know, if, if they're trained in it, they're going to be able to tell you a little bit of what their procedure is. If they're not, you'll probably figure that out pretty quick. <laughs> we have someone asking, they're researching the BS brace. Mm -hmm. At what point in the pedicure do you apply it and what do you charge for it? So generally when I'm doing a BS brace, I have that as a standalone service. So. If it was something that they needed, it would be something that they'd come back for at a later date or we would apply it before the pedicure started if I knew it was something that they were going to do. And the brace, I charge $50 per brace. And that is something you can get more information on from Center for Beauty with mm -hmm. CJ. Um, Kim Jones and I actually did a webinar with CJ to get education on the BS brace. That was very helpful, so keep an eye out for those webinars. Yeah, the BS Braces, it's an amazing product. It has transformed many of my guests' feet and more or less just per making them a little bit more comfortable. I mean, in Minnesota in the winters, a lot of them are wearing shoes all the time. And unfortunately, as much as we want to coach them, those shoes don't always fit correctly. Mm -hmm. And that is a, oftentimes what causes a sensitivity for them is that their shoes are way too narrow at the toe. I have someone that has requested, would you please do a demo video using the LCN product line? So that's kind of what we're doing right now, actually. <laughs> so um, I haven't really been explaining what I was doing too well, but so right now I actually have the LCN urea mask and I applied that to the bottom of the feet and then I used the LCN urea foot cream and I'm using that as the massage lotion. Um, so. It is actually, you know, the only line that I use for pedicures. So I, there are a couple videos out there already on YouTube. So if you search um, the Nelly Neal, it should pop up. Awesome. Do you offer any pedicure training? So on occasion I will have, I host classes in here and I will do the demos along with that training with LCN. I'm not an educator, so a lot of the times it's more of a special guest appearance. Do you ever do them online? No. Okay. Sometimes you can be found at the LCN booth at shows. Yes, absolutely, yeah. I, I love going to shows and when I'm at the shows, it's a little bit of a casual day because generally Mondays are my day off, but you know, Holly's a, a special one, so she got to come in. <laughs> You'd see me at the trade shows, with my giant mohawk, so you'll notice right. me wherever I am. <laughs> Tan the man says, hey. Hi, Tan. Hey, Tan. <laughs> um, some great advice from CJ for a diabetic client is if the nail professional does not do a consultation before your pedicure, you should maybe be concerned about the practices. What is the duration of your pedicures that you offer? So generally a pedicure with me is no shorter than an hour and a half, um, with some of them going up to two and a half hours. So it really depends on the needs of, of the guest sitting in the chair. You know, I do a lot of toenail reconstructions, so for my, my clients that are runners, they're frequently having to grow back nails and yeah, those ones take a little longer when you're reconstructing a nail or doing braces, so it really depends. And what are the standard pricing for your two pedicures with no extra help needed? So my pedicures start at 95 and the, the second one up from that is 100 and starts at 120. Perfect. Do you have the steps of your pedicure written down anywhere? No. Do you use the official LCN step-by-steps? Could they find it that way? Um, I somewhat use the official LCN. You embellish step -by -step. them a little bit. I think that you will have, the, the LCN step-by-step -step is a great resource, but I think that with any product line, you need to figure out how it works for you and how it works for your business. I think it's extremely important to customize the steps to exactly how you work well. Um, do you practice foot reflexology in your services? I do a little bit of foot reflexology, absolutely, yeah. I don't do a ton of it, but it is a little added bonus. Nice. 
And then, yes, they found the videos on YouTube. Hooray! Perfect. And if any of you want the LCN step-by-step, -step, CJ has just commented that she'd be happy to email them to you. Yeah, the LCN step-by-step -step is a great starting point, and it will tell you exactly how the services should be done, and then from there you can yeah, embellish them, have fun with it. That's Agreed. what this is about. It's about having fun. You don't need to stick to the rules all the time, unless it's chemically necessary. Right. <laughs> yeah, I use a different product line, and I find that I do tend to customize to kind of cater it to mm -hmm. my salon and my mood or environment, as you would. So definitely any product line that you prefer can be customized a bit to make the service unique to you so that if another salon in town is using the same products, it's not the same service or the same experience. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I always welcome in local nail techs to come and experience a service. I think that it's really important for, for anyone in the area to kind of work together and we share a lot of clients, you know? There's not always openings on the books, so I think it's a really good thing to know what everyone else around you is kind of doing and just experiencing what they're using. Absolutely, and I think you've touched on something really important there. Networking is extremely important, especially in your own area. Mm -hmm. If you are not wanting to be lone man on the field, if you are willing to be part of a nail community where you live, it's so much easier to share clientele and to share information. I actually have a nail professional in town where I live that we share services. I will go see her for a pedicure. I just took my son to her for a haircut and she will come to me for questions. And so by networking that way, it's a nail community instead of a competition and we're both successful in business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's important. I mean, there's a lot of people that would like to contact you last minute and if you're a busy nail tech, a lot of times there's no spot for them, and if they're leaving town right away, it's good to have somebody to refer them to that you personally know is really, really gifted at doing nails as well. Absolutely, or even like as nail professionals that both work in the salon by ourselves, mm -hmm. it's nice to have someone that could take on your clients if you have a sick day, yes, totally. or if you need to leave for a trade show or something. It's really nice to have a community instead of the lone man standing on the field. Absolutely. Success is best when it's shared. I agree, yeah. CJ, I'm working really hard to stay focused and business-like so that I'm not asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's very tempting. This feels amazing. Uh, and we are going to be bringing the live broadcast to a, sh a close here in a little bit so that I don't fully miss relaxing during part of the pedicure. I'll give you a second massage when we're done. <laughs> we have a question. Other than education and ambiance, how do you position yourself and your services that attract loyal high-end clients? So, to attract, I mean, to attract a, a, a loyal client, it doesn't necessarily have to be a high-end client. You know, I think, I think everyone is, is amazing that comes in here and wants to support you for your business. But to attract them, provide an... Like, stay, um, how would you say this, like? I think you have to be consistent. You have to, yeah, you have to stay consistent with what you do. If somebody's coming to you once and they get a great massage the first time and then the second and third time they come to you, you really skimp on a lot of things, that's where you're gonna start losing those clients and they're not gonna stay loyal to you. I think that's important with whatever you do. Yeah, stay consistent, you know, and that's how you're gonna build a loyal following. They are coming to you because they love you, they love what you do. So I think also staying positive during the service too is really important because they're coming in to feel good. Mm -hmm. So they don't you don't wanna you don't wanna drain everything on them. <laughs> well and I feel like to attract the clientele that you want, you need to look and act the part. Yes, absolutely. If you are smacking on a piece of gum during the service that doesn't project the image that you're wanting to attract. No. And it is staying professional on the phone too. That's your first interaction with a guest. So when they're calling you, have a smile on your face, talk to them, you know, 
in a really professional manner, and that's going to set the tone for how they treat you and how they how they perceive the salon as a whole. Absolutely. It's also what you look like. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't have time to do laundry yesterday and you roll into the salon with your hind end hanging out of some sweatpants <laughs> and a tank top with the girls hanging out. I'm guilty. You know, that, right? I'm sure your girls hang out all the time. Those V-neck shirts, I tell you what. You know, that doesn't project the image of the type of client that you're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to wear a three-piece business suit to do a, a pedicure or a manicure, but you do need to look like a professional. You know, I, I kind of stick to a uniform personally when I'm working. Pedicures are a lot of work, and you're sitting over hot water, so I run pretty hot as it is. So my daily uniform is generally either a black t-shirt or a black dress shirt and jeans. Um, I'm a little bit more casual today just because... It's your it's day a off. Monday and <laughs> who wants to get ready on a Monday? <laughs> but I do think, yeah, it's important to present yourself very professionally throughout the entire service, and that's going to help you retain clients and also pre booking them. Mm -hmm. That's the other best way to keep people loyal is to make sure that they are on your books consistently every few weeks. Another great point from Angel, who is watching, is being confident in your services and knowing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely projecting confidence, even if a client makes you nervous, even if you're new and still a little queasy about the service, projecting confidence is a huge attraction. Yeah, and I think if you are feeling a little nervous, because... You know, there has been occasions in everyone's career where you're really kind of getting flustered, and I think the best thing to do at that point in time, get that guest soaking in the water, go into a separate room, and take a couple really, really deep breaths and slowly let that air out. And by the time you've done that a few times, you're ready to go. Like, your hands stop shaking, you stop being all, all flustered, and it's, it's important to take a little bit of time for yourself on occasion to just calm yourself down before you get going. Absolutely. Um, Tiffany would like to know where you are located. So I am located in Minnetonka, Minnesota. If you're, uh, if you're local here, it's right off Highway 62. Awesome. And it's at the Sky Ridge Nature Preserve. Yes. So I am located inside the most amazing property in the world. It's a 17-acre nature preserve. So we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the main benefit to coming to this property was an overall wellness for me and my guests and having a half a mile trail private trail to walk on we have our own private granite amphitheater to host concerts and events yoga retreats and my favorite barefoot adventures through the nature preserve <laughs> nice that's a good way for me to get clients afterwards Monica that's watching has a suggestion to recommend a standing appointment. Absolutely. That's a great way to help build client loyalty. And you can kind of tell those guests, you know, I have those certain ones that are like 9 a.m. Friday morning every single time. And it's like, those are the ones that you know you can get on a standing appointment because they are so consistent with it and they like a certain time and day. We have someone that says, do you really love to do pedicures? It's my favorite thing in the world. It's all I do. I mean, I do a thousand pedicures a year. You'd have to like it at least a little bit to put yourself through that. Um, I think that pedicures are the biggest way to make a change in somebody, but it's also something that they appreciate for a long time afterwards because they continuously feel the effects of that pedicure for weeks. And they have something amazing to look down at. And we have a viewer that would like to know, do you ever wake up and just don't want to do your job? Um, you know what? I think for anyone in the world, you're always going to have that morning where you wake up and you're like, really, again today? <laughs> but the moment that I sit down in front of a guest, it's like you're having coffee with your best friend all day, every day, especially when they bring you coffee. Exactly. Um, I think I, I can't really recall a day, and you know, I've been doing nails for, I think it's, it's like 10 or 11 years now, and the only thing that made me hate a day was when I wasn't surrounded by the right people in my working environment, and that has been many, many years since that has been the case. Um, 
Yeah, nowadays, if you don't like the people in your working environment, it's time to have a chat mm -hmm. with the man in the mirror. <laughs> oh, and build yourself a big private suite like this one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I th yeah, I think, um, no, I love doing this. I mean, what could be better than, than pampering somebody else and having them really appreciate what you're doing fully. Absolutely. And just giving them an experience that they look forward to every month. Mm -hmm. A great point from Angel is not playing into price wars with discount salons. No, they are not my competition. I established that within the first month of working. You know, I, I knew that there was a lifestyle that I wanted to achieve and I wasn't going to achieve it charging 20 to $30 a pedicure. So right from the start, I knew that that is not my goal. I am not gonna be the cheapest nail tech, but I'm certainly gonna be among the best in my area and that's the goal, you know? Setting yourself apart with unique services and really taking the time to care for your guests and create a, a clean and, I mean, just enjoyable service. Mm -hmm. RJ says it's so nice to see another man doing pedicures. He feels lonely. <laughs> oh, we're not alone. Right? Big hugs, RJ. <laughs> yeah, there are quite a few of us, fortunately. They're just not always right by you. <laughs> and then we have someone that missed earlier when we asked how long does it take you to do a complete pedicure? So, okay, so I book I book the pedicure, this the urea pedicure in an hour and 45 minutes. Generally it takes about an hour and a half to perform. Um, some of the other pedicures can go up to two hours, two hours, 15 minutes, two hours and 30 minutes. It really depends on what that guest needs are. And that is the benefit of coming to a pedicure specialist because I know what they're gonna need and I book the time accordingly for their service. Awesome. Right. And that question just got answered again, but we just finished it. Great, we are getting ready to wrap up the live broadcast. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and we will come back and continue to answer the questions for you. Thank you so Thank much you for joining us here at the Petty Lab. We have enjoyed your company and I have most definitely enjoyed this service. <laughs> it's not over yet. I am going to kick back, close my eyes, and enjoy the rest of this. I hope you all have a wonderful and profitable week in the salon. Bye. Thank you.